Hello, my name is Jennifer Chesney, and I'd like to first set the context for how I have defined big data. From UC Berkeley's Stephen Weber, I choose an excerpt, the range of solutions that can be considered when people and organizations face a complex problem. And I'm mashing it up with another excerpt from some company's Drew Conway, how humanity interacts with the world and each other at large scale. Working from my mashed up definition, I'm going to tell you about how the University of Alberta's digital strategy team is interacting with and leveraging big data. I have a few minutes to present two case studies, so here goes. Case study number one, Jill Hall. Who is she? Jill Hall is a clinical assistant professor in the University of Alberta's Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. This is a fact that a small group of local people knows about. But here's our problem. We want the world to know. How do we get the world to know about Jill Hall? Well, we leverage the power of big data. If you type Jill Hall into a Google search, you get 55 million hits referencing Jill Halls all over the world. But out of the thousands of Jill Halls across the globe, we want you to find our Jill Hall. We want you to see her first. We want her at the top of the Google search listings. My job and research is to use big data constructs like Google to get the most reach and reputational bang for the University of Alberta and its professors. How do we do this? We created professor pages. These are a simple templated set of web pages that every professor on campus can populate with research and publication links. Under the hood, we leverage the power of the patterns that support and build big data. How? First, we put Jill Hall on our mothership. The mothership is our nickname for the University of Alberta domain that is indexed over 134 million times by Google. Then, we talk to Google's algorithm using its language. The specific choices we make in our information architecture, content, and URL naming conventions is constantly changed and updated. Google is always updating the way that it looks at and processes web data. As Google changes, we adapt. And that is how, of the 55 million Jill Hall search hits, it is our Jill Hall who takes the number one slot. Thank you, big data. Now to case study number two, Massive Open Online Courses, or MOOCs. In higher education, the largest scale example of humanity interacting with us, a university, is MOOCs. This is higher education on a big scale. There is global impact to our MOOC work. No less than the democratization of knowledge is our goal, as we make significant inroads towards bringing rigorous learning to all corners of the globe. At the University of Alberta, our MOOCs are also offered for credit. Since we launched our first MOOC 16 months ago, 78,000 learners have taken our online courses, and nearly 2,000 University of Alberta students have taken them for credit on campus in blended or fully online variants. To put these numbers into perspective, the total number of students at the University of Alberta is around 39,000. In just over a year, 5% of the students on campus have already taken a MOOC for credit while a number of people twice the size of the entire student body has engaged with an online University of Alberta course. This is great exposure. And the diversity of our MOOC learners is astonishing. A particular academic quote that has persisted in popular media coverage of MOOCs claims that MOOC students are disproportionately educated, male, and wealthy. But at the University of Alberta, a very different learner profile emerges. 51% of participants are female. 51% are outside the traditional post-secondary age range of 22 to 34. 63% are not working or are a student. And up to 57% are not native English speakers. And here's another important statistic. University global MOOCs have a completion rate average of just 5% when offered for free. But our University of Alberta MOOCs have an 18% completion rate and 98% completion rate by UAlberta students taking them for tuition credit. How are we getting such different results? 
because we have used big data insights from gaming and online behavior patterns to craft a completely different MOOC experience for our students. Interactivity and engagement is front and center. In our MOOCs, your hands are never far from the keyboard. Students engage in frequent formative feedback exercises. We spark curiosity with interactive learning objects like puzzles and sorters. Our anti-passive learning approach is changing the MOOC landscape. And we are bringing that active learning approach to the world as onlea.org, a not-for-profit educational spin-off of the University of Alberta. As a founding member of Onlea, I am now helping other universities using big data to drive digital learning innovation. But there is more to MOOCs than innovative course delivery. They provide an incredible research opportunity. Humanities research often struggles to collect enough volunteers to create a meaningful sample size for a study. The typical sample size in published academic journals of educational research is n equals 10. For more robust studies, n might reach 150 or 200. But the surveys we've issued through our MOOCs has resulted in an average n of 6,400. Coursera registrant data gives us another 44,000 data attributes to compare our survey results against. In a single year, if your MOOC is offered multiple times or on demand, you can get recurring or constant sample study responses. Not only can you ask your own research study questions following research ethics and privacy policies, but you also have the MOOC platform aggregate demographics to compare your study sample to. These volunteer online surveys to MOOC participants and MOOC platform demographics data is unprecedented power that can contribute to statistical significance for a wide range of humanities research areas. Those are my big data ideas for you. Listen to it. Innovate off of it. But most of all, use it to exponentially amplify the power of your own research studies. Thank you.